Hey, people. It's me again. So, anyways, um, as far as, like, the latest happenings when it comes to Chris Chan, you know, I haven't really gotten into more detail about it, but from what I'm hearing is that the charges against have been upgraded to a felony charge of incest, and, and I think there's probably at least 10 charges of incest against him, and so there's a possibility that if he gets convicted of all of those charges and the sentences are concurrent, that's like 100 years in jail at that point. Yeah. But the case against him is a bit shaky because of um, Barb's mental state because of her advanced stage of dementia is one thing that's taken into account and there isn't really like physical evidence that's collected at least not that what I've heard of you know and then the whole thing with Bala might not be admissible as far as that goes because of the fact that Virginia is a two-party consent state as far as what I heard but then I could be wrong unless there's some sort of uh, exceptions to the hearsay rule in Virginia you know and then of course there's the whole account of his mental state as well whether or not all of this sort of stuff can be you know taken account of him not being mentally competent to stand on trial as far as that goes you know but the standard or metric of mental competency tends to vary a little from state to state because you know what could be considered mentally incompetent to stand trial here in California could be you know mentally competent in Arizona or Nevada or or um, Oregon or Washington or something like that or vice versa that yeah so I don't really know much about what would be the law there in Virginia you know in in a way Virginia is kind of somewhere in the middle politically in that sense and so there could be like certain judges that might be a bit more willing to rule out mental incompetency of that sort or others may not be but it depends on how the appointment process is and blah 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 you know and so there's a lot more <sighs> more greater details that have to be put into consideration when you look at it in the grand scheme of things you know what I mean so anyways um I'm just trying to think here as far as that goes um and the other thing that I was going to mention at this point was how he's going to be housed in the PCU, you know, Protective Pesty Unit, in the jail as far as that goes because of the crime there. And quite possibly, of course, his mental condition aside there to tell the truth. So, that is just one of the other things that you have to kind of consider when it comes to Chris Chan and all that. You know what I mean? So, anyways, um, the other thing that I'm going to have to mention here 
you know, when it comes to like the correspondence letters and all of this other stuff, you know, whether that could be admissible or not is another thing there, but when it comes to that sort of thing, you know, you know, especially when it comes to like how like we how we had those shows like CSI or how I mean um what was that one show like Bones and all these other crime drama shows, you know, people expect, you know, to have like world state of the art of uh, forensic labs as far as that goes and you know and then you know jurors get disappointed when it comes to you know a small town police department not having that sort of thing and so that is kind of like one of the reasons why some of these sort of people get away with murder because of the whole CSI effect or something, you know? So that's just something that you have to kind of point out when it comes to uh, that sort of thing here. So, anyways, I'm trying to think when it comes to the other part of, like, Chris Chan at this point there. But I think most people will say that that we have to like close the book on this story because of we're not gonna really hear much from Christian for a while, you know. And then people will just have to move on to other little cows and that sort of thing, you know. But Considering all of that, I think he was like one of the first lone cows, even way back then when it was the case when it came to him there. You know. But as I said before, you know, if I would have known about how far he would go, you know, I could have also participated in some of the trolling if I, if I wanted to, and if I was that kind of a person that likes to troll people, but I'm not, you know, but that just also leads into, like, what else that will happen to Christian after that. To say that whether or not he gets convicted and spends a certain amount of time in prison, and then, and then that's all we wrote about him, and that's it. And then somehow, like about five, ten, fifteen years from now, you know, he's homeless or ends up dead in a ditch somewhere. As far as that goes, you know. So, anyways, I guess that's probably it. So, I'll talk to you guys later.